Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I like to welcome guys to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about Astonishing X Men issue number three. We have fantastic cover art by Joe Malureta. It's really weird, his art, because it's really 90s. It's 90s as hell, but it's also timeless at the same time. It feels really fresh. It looks really awesome. Um, and what I really want to focus on in this particular issue is that during the Age of Apocalypse, um, I discovered a ton of new characters I, did, I wasn't familiar with. And also, we get re interpretations of characters that uh, I already knew about. I didn't think they were too interesting, but when I saw them in the Age of Apocalypse, they sort of really won me over. First one is Wild Child. I remember him popping up in the old school Alpha Flight series. I, I didn't find him to be too interesting. Um, he, he felt like a second-rate Sabretooth. Here he's still a second-rate Sabretooth, but he's Sabretooth's partner, keeps him on a leash. I thought that idea was so cool. And I bought a bunch of Marvel Legends, and a couple of them were from the Age of Apocalypse. I got myself a wild child. He's really hard to pose. Like, I've had this issue with other Marvel Legends. Especially his arms and his, his wrists are complicated. And his head also. But he looks freaking awesome. He came with this chain. Um, I know that a couple waves from now, hopefully this year, we're going to get the Age of Apocalypse Sabretooth. It's going to be a must-buy. I have to have both of these characters together. I hope he's big because this character is really tall. And so after this point on, like every time I see Wild Child pop up, it's like, I, I always get pumped. I think, ah, what a cool character. Uh, even though at least I don't remember too many awesome Wild Child story arcs. Like his origins are a little bit tragic. But um, another character that I really wanted to focus on was... The Age of Apocalypse Sunfire, because I also got a Sunfire. And this look is awesome. Joe Malureta's design for Sunfire was so cool. Uh, the original design, at least when I was a kid, it didn't work for me. And when I, th during the time I started reading comic books, he had ditched his original body armor. He had another look in the 90s. I remember him popping up for the first time. At least for me, the first time seeing him was in a Wolverine comic book where Wolverine's in Japan fighting the hand. Gambit's in that issue. I didn't think it was too interesting. Here's where he got my attention. Later on, this particular look, you're going to see him as a horseman of Apocalypse with this body armor. I also think during the Uncanny Avengers, he adopted this one. And I think he's such a character with such potential. And I've never... Uh, up until now, I've never read like a really good Sunfire story arc. I'm still waiting. So let's get back to the beginning, to the beginning of this particular issue. I saw this advertisement for True Lies, and it, it took me down memory lane. I went to see this through the theaters. I remember watching the movie in the third act. There was a blackout. Everything went dark. And I had to go see the movie on this, uh, the day after. The theater gave us tickets, to see free tickets to see it. The next day, so we could see the ending. They gave us pop, free co popcorn and beverages, too. And the th I remember the third act to that movie, at least in the 90s, was really awesome. I'm not sure if this movie nowadays would be my cup of tea. But back then, I remember going out of the theaters and being really pumped. Like, oh, God, that was freaking awesome. So we have Wild Child. He's on the run. He's trying to escape from the Infinities. Holocaust jumps in. A fantastic villain made his first appearance during the Age of Apocalypse. I thought he had, like, he ended up in the main Marvel universe, and they never really made any good story arcs with him afterwards. Like, he had all everything to be a fantastic X Men villain, he, and he teamed up with Sebastian Shaw for a time, then with Onslaught. Never seen again. He had to drop the name too. He was called he, he was called Nemesis after this. So Onslaught's like, I'm gonna take care with this guy, of this guy. And he, a uh, top hat pops up and he starts dancing. He, the Infinities don't understand what's going on. Obviously, it's morph. It's a distraction. They get blindsided by Sunfire. And I, my next batch of uh, Marvel Legends is going to be morph. That's for some reason he's super cheap on at least uh, on Medical Libre. It's like eBay here in Argentina. So Rogue pops up thanks to Blink, finds the rest of the team. Uh, Wild Child wants to warn them that uh, Sabretooth has been captured by, Sarit, uh, by, uh, by Holocaust. Sorry there. And one brief thing about uh, women, especially in the 90s in comic books, uh, that I already talked about in 
another video, how they drew women very overly sexualized in their designs, stuff like that. Maybe gave the young teen um, ideas some unrealistic expectations on female bodies and stuff like that. I'm just joking, but uh, it's also present in here. But I feel like Joe Malureta gets a pass on this anyways. So the team has to wants to find Sabretooth before, obviously, Holocaust is going to kill him. We have Holocaust torturing Mr. Creed. And this particular incarnation of Sabretooth, I've, I've always loved. And, and he pops up later on in the Exile series. And Blink really wants to find him because, obviously, Sabretooth, this incarnation, sorry for the glare, of Sabretooth was like an adoptive father to her. She had, he had saved her back when she was really young. So, another thing I got to say is that Morph uses his powers very creatively during the Age of Apocalypse. And you don't get to see this as much. Like in the Ex Exile series, um, he, would, he would do a lot of things with his powers, obviously. Like in shape shift into any other characters or into zany stuff. But like here, he uses his powers very, like in very practical ways. Especially for distractions. Here he morphs into a whale, but it opens his mouth. He has all the X-Men on the inside. Then he morphs into a wall where he blocks the view of the other infinities. Like, I feel like they used this, this character better in his morphing powers back then. So, the thing is, Blink is able to find Sabretooth. And his whole insides were ripped out. And back then, I didn't know that Sabretooth and Wolverine had such strong healing factors. I thought he was killed. I thought to myself, oh god, they killed this character. But he's not dead, obviously. So, I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.